Hey guys, Priya here and I am a final year medical student in Newcastle University Medicine Malaysia. If you haven't watched the previous video on pre-test HIV counseling, do check them out on the top right corner here. So today I'm continuing with post HIV test counseling. HIV is a life-changing diagnosis and that's the reason we have to counsel our patients before and after the test to make sure they understand and aware of their illness. Now Let's start with the framework of the counselling and then I have included a sample consultation of how a HIV post-test counselling is done. First and foremost, start with greeting and confirming the patient's identity and then check their understanding about their condition, like what they already know so far, just so you both are in the same track. One of the plus point in exam is asking about how well did they cope during the 3 months period while waiting for the second blood test. Patients can actually tell you a lot about their emotions and struggles. This will also build good rapport with your patient as well. Hope you all have heard of the famous Spikes model used in Breaking Bad News. Delivering the news of HIV positive should be done very very systematically and professionally because like I said earlier, it's life changing for the patient. So this is how it goes. First you want to set up the interview. Next, you want to assess the patient's perception of, about HIV and obtain the patient's invitation and then you want to give the knowledge and information. Basically, this is where you are going to tell the patient has HIV or not. And then you want to address their emotions and finally have a strategy and summarize everything. So this is roughly how the setup of Breaking Bad News goes. Do let me know if you want me to make a separate video on Breaking Bad News as well. So don't forget to sign post before revealing the result because this gives some time for the patients to be ready. And after telling the news, give some time, pause and just acknowledge their emotion. It's truly important to apply all your non-verbal cues here. Once they are comfortable, now is the time to talk about further intervention. First, start off with what further tests you will be doing after the session. Then explain about HIV viral load and CD4 count because these two blood tests will be checked every time the patient comes back for their follow-up. So it's good for them to really understand this part. And then you can start talking about the medication which is the antiretroviral therapy. So the things that you want to explain is what medication they will be taking, how many of them, when they have to take, why they have to take and also the side effects. It's good to also confirm they are drug or food allergies because you really don't want them to be having any sorts of allergic reaction. Next, compliance and adherence to the medication is the key to a good prognosis in HIV. Therefore, make it very clear for the patient that they should not be missing any of the tablets. Throughout the consultation, keep exploring patient's eyes, idea, concern, expectation and be ready to answer their questions. Possible questions that can be asked are Regarding family planning, they might ask you can they share utensils or clothes with family members? Can they donate blood? For your information, you can't donate blood or organs if you have HIV. Besides, as a holistic approach, good to talk to patients about current local HIV support groups or society for them to seek for more help. Be empathetic. Let your patient know you are listening and show support to them. These informations can be super overwhelming, so from time to time, check whether they understand everything or if they want to clarify any doubts. Last but not least, hand over some pamphlets for the patient to read later and summarize all the important points. Thank the patient and you are done. See? Not bad, right? Okay, now let's watch the consultation, how it's done and yes, enjoy. Hello Paul, uh, can I quickly confirm your full name, your age and your date of birth please? Hi Dr. I'm Paul Gret, age 35 and date of birth is 20, 20th of May 1986. Okay, so Paul, um, you have attended the clinic three months ago for a HIV test and were told to come back again today, right? Is that right? Yes. Okay, do you know why is that Paul? 
Um, if I remember correctly, you said that we need to do a second test to have a confirmation. That's right. That's right. Um, I understand that uh, three months waiting can be very stressful. Were you able to cope up with that? How are you feeling so far? I'm very anxious, doctor. Um, actually, I've also been considering not coming back for the result. Mm. But uh, I was also relieved that I'm going to know for sure. Both of those feelings are quite common. I'm glad you came back. Um, would you like to have someone with you right now? No, it's okay, Doctor. Um, I've talked to my wife about this. And we both agreed to go through this together, no matter what the outcome is going to be like. Um, I'm ready for it. That's good to know. Uh, before we proceed with the consultation, what do you know about your condition so far? And is there anything uh, in particular you would like me to include in the consultation today? Mm, so far, I think I know that I have a higher risk of getting a HIV infection. And for now, I just want to know what my HIV status is. And maybe from there, if I have any questions, can I add in between? Yeah, yeah, definitely, sure. Okay, uh, so we have taken your second blood test for HIV and I have your result here. I'm afraid that I don't have a very good news today, Paul. The HIV result came back positive for the first and second time. This means you are confirmed to be having HIV. Oh, alright. Okay, it's um, okay, I was expecting this. I'm sorry. How do you feel about it, Paul? I think I, I think I have always known this would happen. I was ready for this uh, for the past three months. So what's the next step, Doctor? Okay, for now, we need to do a full examination to check for any signs of infection and do a series of blood tests with chest x-ray to check for any individual organ function. Mm -hmm. Is everything is okay or not? And then we need to do the two most important blood tests for you. So I'll explain about this in detail. One is the HIV viral load test. So this is the blood test to look for the exact amount of HIV virus in your blood. And then the second one is the CD4 lymphocyte cell count, or you can call it a CD4 count. So this one is to measure how the HIV has affected your immune system. So let's say the number is lesser. That means the HIV has caused more damage to your body. We will be regularly checking these two values throughout your follow-up to monitor for any complications. And another thing is I would also like to make a referral to the HIV specialist clinic so that they can screen you for other types of sexually transmitted infections as well and also to manage the HIV. Hey, doctor. Uh, sure. So uh, is the medication for HIV called ART? Uh, can you tell me more about it? Uh, do I have to take them mm. all my life? Yeah, you are You are right. You'll be taking something called ART. It's the antiretroviral therapy for treating the HIV infection. And yes, it is taken lifelong. Mm. ART works basically by stopping the virus from making more copies. So mm. when you're taking this medication, this will allow your immune system to repair itself and prevent further damage. Um, to be honest, Paul, there is no permanent cure for HIV, but taking these medications will reduce the virus count in your body to a very, very small number until a point it becomes undetectable, and if it's undetectable, it cannot be transmitted. So there are three medications in total to target different part of this virus, and it's important for you to take them daily with no fail because this drug helps to reduce your viral load in your body. So when, let's say when the viral load, right, when they comes down in your body, it can reduce the progression of the disease itself. So most importantly, ART therapy, they reduce your chance of transmitting HIV to sexual partners. However, I will still strongly advise you to use condom all the time, even if the viral load has become undetectable. Because as you know, the risk cannot be 100% eliminated. Mm, okay, okay. So, um, are there any side effects from taking this medicine? Yeah, just like every other medication has its own, own side effects. In some cases, um, ART, they can also have some serious side effects, um, like allergic reaction, uh, some patient complaints of mood or behavioral changes, uh, increased cholesterol level in their blood. Uh, some patients, they even complain of tingling sensation over their hands, their legs. 
but to be honest side effects can be different for every patient so that's the reason we will monitor you regularly after the treatment has started so that we can check your body's response to the treatment as well as the side effects in case if you find that the side effects are intolerable please come back to us as soon as possible do not stop the medication on your own because we will adjust the treatment for you according to your best interest uh, i have also printed out more details regarding the medications for you in the pamphlet you can check them out later in your free time another important thing is to make sure you are keeping a very healthy lifestyle for uh, such as like having a balanced nutritious diet regularly exercising stop smoking stop alcohol and make sure practice a safe sexual intercourse and i would also like to advise you to avoid unprotected sexual intercourse especially with multiple partners because this can carry high risk of cross infection which means you don't only get hiv but you can get other sorts of sexually transmitted infection like chlamydia gonorrhea this this sorts of things hmm. okay okay yeah uh, uh. Okay, and uh, and one more question, doctor. Um, how about at home with my wife? Uh, do I have to make any changes in terms of sharing the clothes, the food? Okay, HIV cannot spread through social interaction, such as you know shaking hands, kissing, or even sharing clothes. So if you manage your condition properly by taking your medicines right, um, you should be able to live a near normal life. Um, okay, and. Actually, me and my wife have plans in the future of having a baby. Oh, so, do you think it will be possible? As a GP, I can only advise you on the importance of adhering to the medication regime, Paul. But family planning is better to be discussed when your viral load has come to undetectable. So, if it's undetectable, like I said, it's untransmittable. So, HIV positive patient with undetectable level of HIV in their blood, they cannot transmit the virus to the partners right so but then you can always discuss about this with the fertility specialist or the hiv specialist for further advice if you wish to like in terms of getting your wife tested for hiv or getting pregnant with hiv all right and doctor if i test positive for hiv does that mean i have it oh no paul no um testing positive for hiv does not mean you have aids aids is the most advanced stage of hiv disease but hiv can lead to aids if not treated properly okay got it all right do you have any more doubts paul uh, no you can go on okay so uh, let me discuss a little bit about your monitoring so normally for hiv positive patients right their progress is monitored every 3 to 6 months and this will be including checking for other infections we will check your viral load and also we will check your cd4 count like i told you earlier if you are not compliant with your medication the viral load can increase and you might be exposed to more infection so the numbers that you can remember right for cd4 count normally more than 500 represent little risk whereas cd4 count less than 200 is almost sufficient for a diagnosis of aids or other hiv related illness Okay, so basically, my CD4 count needs to be more than five hundred. Am I right? Yeah, exactly. That's right. So far, are you with me? Okay. Yeah, all good. Um, the next thing I want to talk to you about is regarding your job and uh, further finance. Have you discussed about this matter with your boss? Uh, no, not yet, and I'm not sure. Should I? Okay, so there is an act called Equality Act. Uh, according to that act. There is no legal obligation to tell your employer that you have HIV, unless if you're handling like a frontline job, like you know doctor, nurse, where you perform invasive procedure. But in your case, if your boss is supportive, telling them can make things easier for you to make adjustment, like in terms of your workload, um, in terms of you taking time off for appointments and all that. All right, sure. Okay, so Paul, ah, uh, you can start the medication today itself, and it's good to inform us if you are going to take any other medication because there are many ah uh, drug interaction with HIV medicine. I think I have given you ah uh, a lot of details so far. Is everything clear? Do you have any other doubts or questions? No, doctor, it was clear. That's good. Um, another thing, we do also have the local HIV support group. 
uh, for you to learn about how other people, you know, adapt and handle their life with HIV. Uh, the British HIV Association. Uh, for website, we have the National AIDS Trust website for more details as well. And if you think you might need any help or support, we can always direct you to the appropriate groups. Oh, okay. And that's great to know. Thank you, Doctor. And thank you so much for all the information you've given me so far. No problem. Thank you and uh, see you both. Thank mm-hmm. you.